Save thousands and learn how to build your own lithium golf cart battery today. Find where to purchase everything in the description below. These are the cells that we're going to be building bus bars for and building out the battery. So I'm going to show you how to connect these type of tabs together um, in this video. And I would say this application will work for any type of cell like this that has the that's basically a lipo battery with tabs on it. Whether it's a cell type like this that has two tabs on them or the Spimo batteries like this that um, individually look like this. Um, but come from battery hookup with something in them already. So um, here we go. Okay, for our bus bar, we got a piece of this flat aluminum, a piece of this U-shaped aluminum, and we're gonna, before we cut them into the individual bus bars, we're gonna screw them together. So what we'll do is we'll put our first bus bar will be here and our last one will be there, so we'll put the screw through them to hold them all so we can drill all of the holes for the individual bus bars. We'll mark it out and measure how much we need for each one. And these are the screws we got. So here we got it. We just need to measure and mark out how big we need to cut these so we have enough. The length of that one bus bar to be the width of one of these tabs here. Right now we just have them all paralleled. Um, so we just got to measure and at least have it this length. We can have it a little longer. So if we went with two inches for each bus bar, so we got to, um, cut two inches, mark them two inches. All right. So we got to mark out two inches on here, give a little bit of room for our blade width. Um, we can cut it with a circular saw if you have a carbide tipped um, blade and it is sharp. You can cut uh, aluminum with that or we can use the grinder, whatever one works easier. So we're going to mark, mark out two inches, um, probably uh, two and an eighth of an inch at least. And hopefully we have enough. I think we need 11. Okay, so we got one bus bar, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So now we just got to cut them, uh, finish screwing them out, and then cut them apart. All right, so we got our uh, bus bar cut, and obviously it's the right width because we made it the right width. All right, so here is our first one that we have put on, and here they are all cut apart in pieces. I did go ahead and uh, drill these, these top, uh, the top spacers out bigger, so they're bigger than the uh, screws, so they're loose like that. Uh, and that's important so that it uh, sandwiches and pulls this down onto this nice and tight so that it uh, pulls them all together and we get a nice tight squeeze so that it squeezes this terminal to this terminal. That's mostly what we need. Another thing I'm doing is cutting some cardstock and just um, putting them between here so there's a little bit of something between them. All right, so this is kind of how I'm putting them on. I uh, take them apart, and since my holes are not perfect on each one, so I don't get them flipped around, leave it the same way, and then put uh, that on there and mark the where the holes are gonna be out. And I'm sliding this stuff out because from here to here, there's a terminal, I do have it taped, but when I put these, um, when I put these things on and I only have one screw in, sometimes, if you're not careful, it'll want to flip down, and you for sure, for sure, at least want to have it taped. But a little extra safety would be good. You can just mark it out, self tap these through. Once you get them self tapped through, you got the one hole lined up. You can put the one on, and then self tapping through the other and into that uh, is a quite a bit easier. Um, but as you can see, while you're messing with this bus bar, having this flop down to the other one can be dangerous, so definitely. Uh, separate it once and twice if you need to so just be careful there all right so as you can see also while you're building these to tape them is important because all it takes is a little bit of wiggling and uh, i could make this bus bar touch that bus bar so definitely uh, cover them you do not want these shorting all right so now we're doing the bms and we're hooking up the leads and just typically follow the uh 
the series connections, we find our main negative marked with a uh, black wire on this one. Not all of them are the same. Sometimes they come differently. Um, but the, the, the main positive is marked with a red on this wire, on this harness. So um, find one or the other and start from there and just work your way across. So um, on our, on our uh, main negative, we start there. We're just going to go from series connection to series connection all the way to the main positive. This is where our main positive ended up. You can see because it says positive right there. This side says negative. So um, this was our main positive. So um, you go series connection to series connection. So it goes down to there and there's our series connection and then there and there, 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 there all the way there. So we started with our main negative, went down to our first series connection, and now we're gonna go back to our other series connection and work our way across. By the time we get done, the uh, red wire should end up on the first main positive connection. So that's kind of what we're doing here. Then we'll plug it into our BMS. So the other thing is uh, you just go in order, um, nothing's fancy to it, but just in order across the wires. Hopefully that's somewhat self-explanatory. All right, here's our battery. Nice and finished. Main negative up here, main positive down here. I'm avoiding setting this on the table because it squishes this one up into this one more than I would like to uh, be comfortable with. So um, just lay this battery on its side. So. Basically, all we got to do is stick these thermal probes in, and um, you'll notice. Uh, I'll show you a screen recording here. These some of these BMSs look like they're coming with a on-off switch now, so the discharge current is turned off when these these wires are uh, not touched. But when you touch the wires. The discharge current turns on as you can see a uh, nice little feature you can just hook this onto a switch for the battery put it in an enclosure flip it on a switch so the battery can be easily turned on and off at best this is a 76 amp hour battery but we're gonna run it on a tester right now and see how many amp hours we get out of this we're gonna crank it up to much as we can we can go up to like 180 watts on this but we'll just leave it at about 120 watts more than 12 hours later yeah 16 hours still just charging this thing see where we're at with the uh looking at the bms we're at 65 amp hours but we're draining it really slow we probably won't get this this much out of it um, when we're loading it up with uh, a kilowatt or you know, launching a golf cart at a couple kilowatts, a couple thousand watts, the voltage will probably dip harder and then shut the, the pack off, but um, but maybe not. So anyways, that's, that's kind of where we're at. We'll uh, come back for the final results. All right, we actually managed to get 76 amp hours out of this battery and the uh, cell under voltage kicked in and one of them shut off. So um obviously we're not going to get 76 amp hours out of these under um heavier loads but um still pretty impressive we're gonna um pop this on a charger and charge it up now and pack it away and put it in the golf cart all right so here's the golf cart we're putting the battery into all right we got it in with our big old uh lug connectors you can use uh, the aluminum version of these that don't are aren't encased in this uh, you can buy those at lowe's yeah just the uh, lug connectors and i crimp off the things and stick the wires in there and then we got the big wire in there and then a bunch of small wires for the negative side just wire nutted together for now we drive this around and test out this battery and see if it uh stresses it too much um, for some reason or another and then we'll probably try to permanently fix this battery in here a little better later on and get her painted make her look a little nicer here's a quick little video on this charger it came with it is working 
on the lithium. Pretty much any battery charger that's for 36 volt battery should work on a 10S lithium. Even near the end of the charge here, you can see that the charger is intentionally tapering off the amperage down to four amps uh, as it gets close to full. Here we go. So we're back from our trip. You can see where our battery is. Um, we went about eight miles. Well, 